Stannis and his armada approach Rula's arrival. Davos' child Mathos figures the Red God will safeguard him and when the battle is over his dad will be the ruler's hand. Lord's arrival Tyrion lies in bed with Shay, stressing that assuming the city falls, Stannis will consume each Lannister he can find. Shay vows not to allow him to hurt him, and uncovers the blade tied to her thigh. Cersei hangs tight for the assault with a glass of wine. Maester Pycelle attempts to stir up to offering Cersei guidance and afterward gives her a vial of nightshade, in the event she wants to commit suicide. She takes it however sends him away, not having any desire to pay attention to him. Ron drives a drinking melody with the gold cloaks and prostitutes. He disro, best one having an excellent bygone era until the dog comes in, irritable, and giving him the hostile stare. They momentarily banter the benefits of killing. The dog says Bron is very much like him, just more modest. The dog gazes him down, saying Tyrion will miss him sometime in the not so distant future. Bron stands to confront him, prepared to draw his knife when the ringers ring. Varys pray, hence to Tyrion the guide he requested with 50 miles of passages underneath the city. He's not anticipating running. Varys cautions Tyrion about Stannis utilizing the dull expressions and that he accepts. T.S. Tyrion is the main man who can stop him. Adrift Davos orders drums to answer the chimes from Ruler's arrival. Ruler's arrival. Joffrey believes Sansa should watch him leave for battle by kissing. His new sword that he's named, Heart Eater. Sansa inquires as to whether he'll be out battling with the vanguard. He makes sense of that lord's don't examine methodology with inept young ladies. She traps him by saying she is being moronic. Obviously he'll be out there. Her sibling Rob is generally in the main part of things and he's just a faker. Sans is certain Joffrey will be back. The most awful ones in every case live. She tells Shay, inside the palace walls, the gatekeeper's plan for war and families escape to somewhere safe and secure. Joffrey and Tyrion go to the wall and Joffre. Why is amazed to see his boats are no more. He requests replies taking steps to slice Tyrion down the middle on the off chance that he doesn't get them. That would make me the quarter man, and that simply doesn't have a similar ring to it. Tyrion answers, he gets a light and makes sense of everything's important for the arrangement. Adrift, Davos is concerned not to see any boats hanging tight for them. Lord's arrival, Sansa and Shay balance out in a shelter for ladies. Cersei brings Sansa over and offers her wine. Cersei gets expression of individuals taking ponies and orders them killed and their heads put on spikes. She requests more wine. On the palace wall, they require the bowmen as Stannis boats approach. Joffrey cries when they stand by to assault. One boat emerges from Lord's arrival to meet Stannis' armada. Adrift, Davos calls for Toxophilite and they watch as the boat cruises quietly past. They see there's nobody ready. They see fierce blaze spilling out of the boat and Davos orders them to stay away. Ruler's arrival. On the fortification, Hawlene happily hands Tyrion a light. Tyrion drops the light over the side of the stone wall. From across the precipice, Bronn. N sees the fire tumble from Tyrion's situation it is a sign and he fires a solitary blazing bolt into the rapidly spreading fire by the boats. Davos witnesses shouldn't something be said about too. Yet entirely it's past the point of no return. Mathos transport touches off first, trailed by Davos. Individuals of Lord's arrival witness a staggering blaze as many boats go up in the green fire of rapidly spreading fire. Tyrion watches with sickening dread as boats break into splinters and men shout in the water. Watching the showcase, Stannis orders his men forward. He says the diminutive. E person has played his stunt and it will just work once. One of his men cautions him hundreds will bite the dust. Thousands, Stannis adjusts. An inexorably intoxicated Cersei brings Sansa over to deride her for imploring. She gets Sansa more wine and tells Sansa she ought to have been conceived a man, she loathes being cooped up. That's what Cersei says assuming the city falls, she'll be compelled to attempt to entice Stannis. However she'd have better possibilities tempting his pony. She guides Sansa that her best weapon is between her legs, then, at that point, cautions her that in the event that the city falls, the ladies, ought to be just a tad of an assault. 
Back on the wall, Tyrion arranges his men to rain fire on Stannis' coming armada. He sends the dog out to welcome them. Joffrey looks commonly terrified and jittery. Stannis' men land on the shore and blazing bolts downpour downward on them from the palace. All things considered, Stannis and a few men come to the palace walls. The Lord's arrival monitors toss rocks over the bulwarks. Stannis orders his men to the mud door. The dog and his men arise on the shore and battle, Lancel is injured and withdraws for the palace. A drunker Cersei converses with Sansa about Jaime being educated to battle when they were youngsters and her being instructed to be exquisite and pleasant prior to being offered to Robert for him to ride like a pony. Cersei at long last gets a decent gander at Shay and says that she doesn't perceive her. At the point when Shay approaches and messes up a curtsy, Cersei is dubious and C. Onsiders how she got where she is without figuring out how to appropriately dip. She requests that Shay recount her story, however at that point Lancel busts in and tells Cersei that Stannis Armada is annihilated yet he actually made land. Cersei orders him to take Joffrey back to his chambers. Cersei fesses up to Sansa that one of the watchmen, Sir Ilan Payne, the Lord's killer, isn't there to safeguard them. Assuming Stannis takes the city, he won't be taking them alive. Back outside, the dog divides men in two and continues to battle. He's immediately frozen in his tracks when a man ablaze runs at him shouting. Ron saves him with a bolt to the flaring man. The dog is completely disrupted by all the fire, has a front line revelation, and leads his men back in the palace walls. Star, knees orders the stepping stools up the walls and goes up one first. He's on the palace wall rapidly. Inside, the dog calls for wine which he chugs. Tyrion hollers at him. The dog lets him know he lost around 50% of his men. Joffrey cries at him to return out. The dog tells the city, the watchman and Joffrey to f off and leaves. Stannis' men utilize their improved landing ships as security from the blazing bolts and move toward the palace walls. They set up a battering ram. Lancel comes for Joffrey to take him back to the Red Keep. On the off chance that you will not safeguard your own city. For what reason would it be a good idea for them they? Tyrion requests from him. Joffrey inquires as to whether his mom had pressing business with him, searching for an out. Then he arranges his men to address him on the field of fight. Tyrion and every one of the men see him creep away. His men underneath notice their lord's weakness and their will to battle lessens. Tyrion requires his p. Rotective cap and yells that he'll lead the assault. The men need some persuading. Tyrion says there's one more way out and he'll show it to them and they'll go after from behind. He tells the officer, s not to battle for their lord or for cash or anything, however to battle for their city, to safeguard their homes and their ladies. Those are bold men thumping at our entryway, how about we go kill them? He yells. The men rally. Not having seen any of this, Lancel reports to Cersei that the fight is lost and that Joffrey ought to return out and battle. He attempts to talk some sense into her. However she punches him in his bolt wound and tempests off. Sansa guarantees the ladies that Joffrey will save them and recommends they sing a song. Shay advises Sansa to go to her room and bar the E. In Treeway so the gatekeeper doesn't kill her. Shay's remaining to bid farewell to somebody and has her blade tied to her leg. Back in her chamber, Sansa finds the dog pausing. He lets her he's going some spot no that isn't consuming. What might be said about the ruler? She inquires. He can kick the bucket fine and dandy all alone, he says. He offers to take her to Winterfell and vows to keep her safe. At the point when she says Stannis won't hurt her, he tells her he's an executioner, similar to her dad and siblings. She understands the dog doesn't mean her any mischief. Stannis and his men keep going after the walls and Tyrion and his men slip away behind them. Tyrion hacks away at fighters' knees. They ward off the going after bunch rapidly and begin reciting, half man, yet t. He triumphed as and keep going long when a tremendous influx of Stannis soldiers come nearer from another course. Another conflict follows. Tyrion is gone after by Sir Mandon of Joffrey's King's Guard and gets an extreme cut all over however is saved when his assistant, Podrick wounds his aggressor with a lance. Obviously, 
Either Cersei or Joffrey didn't expect for Tyrion to endure this fight. Tyr, Ion gradually passes out as the injury all over drains. Cersei clusters with her young child Tommen on the iron privileged position and recounts to him the tale of a mother and her whelp and how she let him know that one day everybody will bow to him. Outside on the fight shores, the fight turns when a gathering of mounted knights apparently drove by Renly Baratheon in his antlered rudder and PR. Otective Leia collides with Stannis' flank. Cersei is going to take care of Tom and the Nightshade when somebody blasts through the ways to the royal chamber. On the wall, Stannis' men drag him away from the lost fight. Tryon walks wonderfully into the royal chamber and welcomes his little girl Cersei. Obviously the Lannisters had made a settlement with House Tyrell as the protected knight Elam. Anates Renly's head protector and uncovers himself to be Sir Loras Tyrell. The fight is finished, we have won, Tywin reports as she lets the vial of dangerous nightshade fall and break on the royal chamber floor.